So this is just a side view. And here you can see these wires have been embedded into the, the structure, and it leaves a planar surface from which we can continue to build. It's full copper. This is very, very conductive. And again, you can see how it sort of structurally integrates into the plastic. And then we had other ideas to connect to components and so forth. And this is a video that has just been published in the journal Science this week. Uh, it's been sped up for my 20 seconds, so this isn't normal. But the idea then is you see two 3D printers collaborating, and then a gantry system here doing things like pick and place. This is way too fast. If you're interested in seeing this, go to the Journal of Science. <laughs> got to go to the Journal of Science. Yeah, it's a, a review article about multifunctional 3D printing. OK, next one. And then at UTEP, as we're leaving, I'm helping them write a proposal to take BAM technology, which is a big area added to manufacturing, something that will print basically a car. This was printed at a, at a conference <coughs> two years ago in Chicago. And the idea then would be that we take that wire embedding technology and integrate it with this printer that's the size of this room. And the idea then you can make a car, you can put wiring harnesses into it that structurally integrate into the, the outer shell, giving you electrical you know, functionality, but also improving the strength of the actual structure. So this is actually a BAM, I think this is an Oak Ridge, and they're getting one in El Paso. And I just found out there's one coming to Akron, there's a, a company that's going to be a foundry. You, if you want to build this, you can go to Akron and just with a credit card. I don't know how much it's going to cost, but I would do that because I want to get a, like at least a couch or something, you know, out of this. But you can get that, and of course, the guys at YSU and I are working together with them to try and you know put some research into that. Next one. So the original project was really to take satellites, and this is actually a satellite that the University of New Mexico made and suck all the electronics and harnesses into the structure, kind of like this, just to get the weight and volume efficiencies to go up. And there's a couple of interesting examples I got coming up. Next one. So this was propulsion. This piece right here is blowing micro-newtons of force. It's a Teflon coaxial cable. Put 2,000 volts across this in a vacuum. That's an evacuated bell chamber. And this thing pops. It's not going to get us to Mars, but it can make a little satellite rotate around and take a look at Earth or something like that, attitude control. But this was work done at NASA Glenn and with American Mates as well. And then this is probably the nerdiest thing. It's probably the least understandable, the most esoteric. But if I can make just some strange structure with metal and plastic, I can make antennas that were not possible before. And this is something people are very interested in, is phased array antennas. And I'm working with, well, with America Makes Funding and uh, University of Texas El Paso and the University of Arizona is also helping. Uh, I think this is going to revolutionize the way antennas are made. I can make a nose cone for a UAV and put a topology of metal into it that will allow me to just get much more efficient and powerful antennas. Next one. This is the dumbest idea we had. We went to a conference <laughs> in Vegas, and we're kind of showy, and we like to market ourselves well. But if you ever want to get a dice, you don't want it 3D printed because you can weight it with a gradient. You can make it cheap. So we showed this idea to like casinos, and they're like, no way. You need this to be done in some sort of traditional way. But the thing is, is if you're talking to a kindergartner or a senator, they always, oh, I get it. I know what you're doing. You're 3D printing electronics. It's like, yeah, that's what I've been talking about for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, next one. And this is just a cool, this was a video, very quick. This is just, okay, so I had to speed it up for 20 seconds. But the idea is we are printing and stopping and putting magnets and electromagnets and circuits into a structure, and then it's a fully functional. So I sped a time lapse up, that's a bad idea. Anyway, I love this kid. <laughs> and then, okay, next one. Okay, so now what I'm working on primarily is looking at computer vision, low cost, cost effective way to, to really introduce closed loop control into 3D printing. This is electron beam melting, this was done in El Paso. And I'm just trying to look at the, you know, the beam coming down and doing like a small melt pool here. And then more powder would get thrown across it. You do it again, you build up a three dimensional structure. And what's interesting, I took the Stokebridge National Labs, you see stuff sh shooting off in different directions. 
Oak Ridge says, look, we don't care about what you're melting because we, we're planning to do that. That's the idea. But it's probably more interesting to look at these you know, projectiles that come off. And that tells you, gives you more insight into the actual process itself. Next one. This, is da this was downstairs like a year ago. This is a Renaissance laser machine. God, I can't talk fast enough. So it's building some sort of machine, and the wiper's coming to put new powder, and we're getting lines, and these are bad. You'll see this process gets better and better, and these lines go away. So right there, that's a really nice sweep. That was a false red right there, because it's just a part of the design, but you can see that there's even lines over here until that last layer. And I'm mathematically determining sort of the health of the dispensing process as it pushes powder over the structure to make the you know, subsequent layers. Okay, then finally I did this, I think, in my, my bedroom. This is a lull spot, and I'm taking layer by layer, and basically giving it a profile and then persisting it. And you couldn't see it because it went by too fast. But there was a little, basically, debris up here that ended up coming down here. And if I just take that computer geometry that I've captured at each layer, I can graph it. And it should be a straight line going up 100 microns at a layer. And here you see that it's, it's jumps up, which is debris. And then that debris is kicked off and it goes back down. So you can identify whenever there's some sort of unhealthy process uh, parameter. And you might do something like turn a fan on or raise the extruder temperature. And this can all be done in a closed loop. And then one more. Well, there's one more. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm about to fall down. 20 seconds to slide. This, this, yeah. I think I just jogged a marathon. But anyway, that's it. Thank you.